it's just the air. Oh, there's a little bit. So you can see there is white cast. Hi, I hope you're all well. If you are new around here, hello, it is lovely to meet you. And if you are returning, thank you very fucking much for coming back. My name is Alana and I'm a 36 year old lady living in Scotland and that is where the accent is from. And on this channel, we predominantly like to talk all things beauty, skincare, hair care, lifestyle, travel bloggery, vloggery, bullshit. But with a liberal sprinkling of sarcasm and cynicism and probably what we might say, honesty, <laughs> thrown in on top. If that sounds like your kind of thing, there's a little subscription button in the corner, give it a thumbs up and all that other YouTuber crap. But if today's intro looks a little different, even the setup, even my bed isn't made in the background, if you can see Bluey right here. Any of you guys know who this is, then you are my people because it is one of the best kids TV shows I've ever seen in my fucking life. Anyway, also I sound very hoarse because my one year old son has smitted me again. So I have the cold again, but also very chesty, has went into my chest as well now. It was very blocked at the start of the week and now I'm very... <laughs> done a COVID test, it's not COVID. This is gonna be an empties video, but I am actually on night shift tonight. It's my first night shift back since having my son, so that's gonna be a bit scary. But it is currently three o'clock in the day and I have to pick up Jack at four o'clock. So normally, pre-Jack, I would go back to bed about between two and five o'clock in the day, two and six o'clock in the day. But what I done today was sleep till one o'clock and Alan dropped him off at nursery and I've got up had a shower, done what I need to do around the house and now I've got about an hour till I have to go and collect them and then I have to go to work about half six. So, we'll see how that goes. I will keep you in the loop. Follow me over on Instagram if you want quicker updates on that one because I think I'm gonna struggle for the fact I feel like shit but also first night shift and I've not done what I would normally do to sleep. So this video is gonna be an empties video. So I'm sorry that is a slightly different intro. I thought I would just explain why everything in the background is in disarray. I am in no makeup and it looks like I'm in pretty much jammies. I've got joggies and a sweatshirt on because this is how I go to work on night shift. It's how I go to work on day shift too, to be honest with you, because I just change into my uniform. But today is all about comfort. Grab yourself a tea, a coffee, a cuppa, whatever the fuck you like, and let's just get into this. I actually feel like hot and cold drinks are really good on the throat at the moment. Probably speaking for the better part of 30 minutes in a video, not the best, but I'm gonna have to speak on night shift anyway. <coughs> <coughs> Honestly. <coughs> it sounds like I smoke 40 fags a day. <gasps> okay, so. First of all, I'm gonna to talk to you about the Lee Stafford dry shampoo. I remember when I picked this up, it was in a What's New video, and basically what I was saying was, when dry shampoo started to be a thing, because we didn't have dry shampoo when I was like tiny, but in my mid to late teenage years, dry shampoo became a thing. Before that, don't know what people did at festivals, used talcum powder, I think, that was all. But basically, this is the one I remember being like, ooh, dry shampoo, like this was the only brand I really remembered, pre-Batiste, having dry shampoo. So I thought when this was on offer, I was like, oh, okay, maybe you shot this. I don't think I've ever tried it in all that time. It was okay. It kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Because there's so many other ones out there now that I was like, yeah, it's okay. And it's a weird one because I don't feel like it left too much of a white cast. It did leave a little bit of a white cast, but I have very dark hair. Left a little white cast, but what I actually felt was, initially when I used it, I thought this is one of these ones that's really clean feeling. So it'll be good for when I'm at work because I don't mind not having the volume in my hair when I'm at work, it's tied up off my face anyway. But this one felt that clean way, but I felt by the end of the day, it was like greasy, there was build up. And if I used it a few days in a row, I was like, yeah, definitely a lot of build up from this one. So although it gave the clean feeling initially, it left my hair feeling really quite dirty after a couple of days. And I can usually go kind of three to four days without washing my hair. So I will not purchase this again. Um, just a little one to try, but not for me. I then have this from CeraVe. Uh, I think there is one of these in every single empties video that I do. So if it's not this, it'll be the, what do you call it? Soap and Glory scrub. I would. I don't even know if there's one in that basket. You'll soon find out. Totally empty, as you can see. Now, I think it was Sheila had said she used the lotion and she didn't like it. This is the one I use. It's the cream, the moisturizing cream that's in a tub. I know a lot of people that use this on their face as well. Sorry, I was around here. I know a lot of people that use this on their face as well. I don't, I just use it on my body, but it's for dry to very dry skin and it's one I really enjoy. I have always had itchy skin, like on your flank area, like your love handles, that little area there on the back of your kind of lower back and round 
to where, I don't know what you'd call it, just the lower part of your stomach, um, there. And it got worse in pregnancy, obviously because your skin is stretching, I suppose. I was like, oh my God, I'm so itchy all the time. And after even having Jack, and like I never ended up with any stretch marks and that's not a boast or anything, but my skin seems to have stayed the way it was pre-pregnancy. It's okay. Yes, of course, it's a little slacker. There's a little bit of jiggle there. But my skin in itself seems to be the same. But it is so itchy now. Like, way itchier than it ever was before pregnancy. So if I don't put this on in the morning now, throughout the day, I am almost clawing myself to the point where I am at scratching. Sometimes overnight, I wake up in the morning and I've got scratches all on my side. And I've obviously done it when I'm sleeping because I'm so itchy. It is probably something I should go and speak to my GP about or the doctor, but I just haven't got around to it. I just haven't even gave it much thought. I've just continued to use some moisturising cream. And this does the job when I use it. It's just if there's days where I forget to use it, then... And I don't have a backup of this, so I'm actually going to have to go and pick one up. I then have this from Glossy. It is the Milky Jelly Cleanser. This is completely and utterly finished. Not a tiny bit left. I want to say I started using this, was it January? I bought it in November in the Black Friday sale, but I had two mini ones as well, and I still have one in my travel bag, and I have another mini one uh, that's sitting in the bathroom now because I've run out of this. But this I used up over the course of maybe two, three months, I want to say. I really like it. I think it's really good. It's a favourite. I obviously still use my CeraVe hydrating cleanser. Um, I'm not going to rush to Glossy to pick another one up of these unless I'm picking up some other stuff. But at the moment, I'm not needing any more. But I do like it. It is one that I will continue to repurchase if I'm picking up from Glossy. I think it's a really nice cleanser. I've said it before about that cleanser. It's nothing life-changing. It's not like, oh my god, this is amazing. It's just a really nice, basic, kind of semi-hydrating cleanser. Um, but what I like about it is, actually, when you're using it, it feels really nice, as opposed to the CeraVe one, which is better value for money. I think that one just feels a little nicer when you're using it, but I always buy the CeraVe one because it's better value for money. I then have this from Pixie. <laughs> the reason I have this is because I cleaned out my bathroom cabinet when I used to keep some skincare. I don't really keep that much in there anymore, and I found this and I thought, Oh my God, this is probably like at least two years old. So I just emptied it out. It was probably had about that much in it. I emptied it out. It was a hydrating milky makeup remover with coconut and probiotics. Now, I remember I reviewed this. There must be a video up somewhere on my channel. I reviewed this whole skincare range from Pixie because it was like the hydrating range. Uh, and I said how much I hated because it had one of these tops. I've just squished that everywhere. Onto my pillows that are not in my bed at the moment because I've not made the bed yet. That was a good one. By the time I was saying, this is crap, I hate this packaging, I said it about a few other products that had similar packaging over the course of the last two years and then realised I was using them incorrectly. If you have a product like this, and I know I'm probably teaching granny to suck eggs here, don't put your cotton pad on in the middle and push down because basically whatever comes out here just squishes all out the edges. Put your fingers on the two edges with your cotton pad and squish down and then it goes onto the cotton pad. Squishy mess, avoid it. But what I will say is the actual product itself, I wasn't like blown away by, it was okay. Um, I'll just continue to use the Garnier Micellar Water. This is just... It's all right, it's fine. I'm not gonna pick it up again. I was just looking at the basket. I've got so much skincare in there. Okay, so Imperial Leather, Imperial Lather, however you want to say it. I say, I think it is leather because it's like spelt that way, but it lathers up. So sometimes I wonder. Uh, this is the Energizing Body Wash in Bergamot and Sea Salt. They used to do one that was like, was it Bergamot and Sea Samphire or something? The package was different. They've rebranded, so they've got different bottles now. And I used to really like these ones because they're slightly more masculine in scent. They're not too sweet. And I prefer a slightly more masculine fragrance for my shower products. Um, the one that I've picked up recently from, uh, what's it called? Rituals. I don't think that video will be up yet. It'll be in my What's New video. But that's quite a sweet scent and I do enjoy it. But I don't like overly floral or candy or things like that. Like, I, I just, I, a great example would be Snow Fairy from Lush. That's not for me. I get why people like it, but it's not for me. I quite like Rose Jam from Lush because it's just a little bit more grown up. But even at that, over the last few years, I've been like, mm, definitely going more towards the kind of masculine fragrances. And I always loved using this one when it was a different packet. I'm currently using up another one from Imperial Leather, and I think it says for men. But again, I really like it. These are really good. They're cheap. They're cheerful. I like them. It's a 250ml bottle. They last a really long time. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I would buy it again. And talking of Rose Jam, here's an empty Rose Jam right here. There's a little... Let me get another shower out of that. 
actually. But um, this would have been bought for me at Christmas. My mother-in-law always buys me this scent because she knows that I quite like it. I do really like it. I just feel like in recent years I've started to like more refined stuff than really sweet stuff. Um, and I've never been a big lover of sweet fragrances, but I did like this one. I think it's very nice. So I wouldn't be adverse to buying this again. It's just now I'm kind of looking at other products and other items and I probably won't reach for this firstly, but if my mother-in-law buys me another one at Christmas, I'm not going to not use it. I do like it. And here is an exact product with that same top. And I'm sure I was like, I hate these tops with this one as well. Uh, this one is the Glow Hub Nourish and Hydrate Toner Essence. Um, it has peach and coconut in it. It was nice, it was fine. It's quite a nice little toner. I think I predominantly used this up when my skin went a bit bad between February and March because when that perioral dermatitis happened, I was like, oh, I'm just stripping everything right back. And some nights I didn't want to necessarily like wash my face because I felt it was because of over cleansing that kind of outbreak happened. So sometimes I was just like splashing my face with some water or whatever or using a micellar water to remove whatever and then toning my face and putting on a moisturiser. So I used up this during that time and I think it's nice. I think it's good. Uh, I won't rush to buy another one, but I wouldn't be adverse to buying another one if I thought I really need a toner. But at the moment I have another one on the go. I just don't need it. But it was quite a nice little product, I think, for value for money. Very nice. How did I know there would be one of these in here? It's covered, absolutely covered in ooze. Uh, so this is the snow, ugh, it's going up my nose now. Ugh. This is the Soap and Glory Smoothie Star Breakfast Scrub. It has been around for years. I want to say I started using this in maybe 2010, 2011, maybe 2009. I can't remember exactly. I remember there was a YouTuber that I used to watch from America that started talking about this and put me onto it and I have pretty much used it since then. I think it's fantastic. Um, I have one in the bathroom at the moment. I am going to be doing some self-tan trials for this year. I've already bought the products for it. So I will be using this to do my pre-scrub for my self-tanning. Uh, I think it's great. I always buy it. It's one of my favourites. I don't think I've purchased another kind of scrub in at least three years. I want to say since the pandemic. I think before that I maybe had other scrubs I'd tried and wanted to give a go body stuff, but I think I've just been buying this for the past three years because I was like, yeah, I know I like it. We'll just keep going back to it. So that is that. Oh, I should probably tell you as well, it smells like, um, like maple. That's what it used to advertise as, maple. Like it was a breakfast scrub, so it smelled like maple pancakes or something. But now it says it's scented with almond and caramel. So just so you know, but I, I, yeah, it's got that kind of sweet smell to it. Just said I don't like sweet scents, but when this, it comes to this, I, I do like that, I do. I'm a fickle bastard, what can I say? All right, I was just trying to pull out the big items before I go into skincare, because there's loads of skincare. Uh, this is another dry shampoo. This is the Colab Overnight Dry Shampoo. I thought this was quite nice. Uh, I did use it kind of overnight, but I used it during the day as well. I thought it was good. I liked it. Um, it is a little bit of a kind of white cast going on, but if you use it at night time, it certainly helps. That helps with all dry shampoos, not just this one. But also I found, again, this is one that kind of gives you that clean feeling as opposed to gritty feeling. I prefer the gritty feeling because this is my hair dried naturally. I have not put a straightener through it. This is how limp and lank my hair is. So I like having a dry shampoo. I've put dry shampoo in it today after my shower. You can probably see there's a little bit of white cast up here that gives a little bit of texture. I prefer that. I don't want one that just keeps it totally clean. The one that I've just used actually is a new one. Um, it's new packaging. I feel like they might have had stuff before from got to be. Um, I'll go into it in another video, but they've got a volume one and a fresh one. So I used the fresh one today because I was going to work and didn't need the volume, but I think it's not too bad for volume either. So we'll see how we go. And then this one here is from Kristen S. This was sent to me in PR, but I had tried this before. This was sent to me anyway. I remember the first time I tried it, I was a bit like, hmm, this has got a lot of white cast it. And see when I used this one, it didn't have the same. I'm gonna see if there's any left. No, it's just air. Oh, there's a little bit. So you can see there is white cast. But what I would say is I found that that Kristen S one, even though there was white cast, it kind of went away quite well. There we go. So I think the white cast disperses quite well. I think it works quite well fringes all over the place now. Um, it disperses quite well. I don't think it leaves whiteness on the hair too bad as long as you give it a good rub in. So I don't know if they changed the product slightly, maybe reformulated it, because the first time I tried that I definitely was like, whoa, this is far too white for me, but 
Since trying that one, I was like, okay, that could be suede. That is a little bit more pricey. I want to say that's around the £10 mark as opposed to a lot of your other dry shampoos, kind of, you know, anywhere between three and £6. So it is a little bit more pricey, but I did enjoy using it and I wouldn't be adverse to picking it up again if it was maybe on a wee buy one, get one half price offer or something like that. So it was okay. I didn't mind it. Uh, I then have two facial sprays. This one is the Curel one. I recently spoke about in my monthly roundup. This is the one I finished. I got bought it for Christmas. It's fantastic. I really, really like it. I, what can I say? I just think it is beautiful. It's so, so nice. It's very moisturising. There's just a little something to it. It's just gorgeous, but it is £20 a can, which is quite expensive. I feel like if this was around the £12 mark, I would maybe feel a little bit differently, but it is £19.50. Again, if you are going to pick it up and it's on offer in Boots, if you could get one, like a little buy one, get one free, or buy one, get one half price, or three for two on the Curel products, then I would say go ahead, get it, because I definitely think it is worth it. I probably will buy it again for £19.50. That's how much I think it is worth it. But I am aware that is a lot of money for a facial spray and you can get cheaper ones like the one I spoke about recently from Superdrug for £9.99, which actually, go and check at the moment because when I went to find the link when I was making that video, they were on offer for £4.99. And I think they were still on buy one, get one half price too. So go and check them out because they're very, very good. It's not an aerosol, obviously, but very, very nice. I then have this one from Aven, which is one that I have used for years on years on years on this channel. I spoke about it pretty much every year in my yearly roundup. It's only been in the last maybe 18 months, I think I've changed up facial sprays. I did have this one to use up. It's one that I've had kind of sitting on my side there for quite some time. It is done now but it is just a thermal spray. It is like the Evian in a can, if I'm honest with you. It doesn't have any of the kind of properties that the Curel one has. It's very nice. You get more in this can for better value, basically. This one is like 300 mils. Um, I can't remember how much this one costs. Is this around the 20 pound mark as well? I'm gonna put the price here. But for the size of it for value for money, this is better than the Curel, but I would say that the Curel is nicer. So, swings and roundabouts, see how you feel. Okay, so I've picked up the basket because this is full of skincare. There are some things in here that I have spoke about before till I'm blue in the face. So let's just whiz through them rather than me going over them again and again. This here is the Inculus Niacinamide Serum. I don't know how many of these I've been through now since at least 2020. I think I buy one as soon as it runs out. This is the only one I use. I have tried a few other kind of mixtures of um, niacinamide serums and stuff. There's a couple in here I'll tell you about in a minute. But this is the one I always come back to. Always, religiously, every single night. I love it. This from the Inky List as well, exactly the same feeling. This is the Caffeine Eye Serum. I used to use the Ordinary Eye Serum or the Ordinary Caffeine Serum quite a lot because you could dip that into, like you put a few drops into your moisturiser and I really enjoyed it. But... This one, because the packaging is better and all that kind of stuff, and especially since they've reformulated it so it can stand up as well, it's not got the tiny nib. It's fantastic. It is my favourite caffeine eye serum, favourite caffeine serum, whatever you want to do with it, put some in your moisturiser, mix it up. So normally, like tomorrow when I come in from night shift, I would put on my nighttime skincare, and I would usually use a few drops of this, or the ordinary one, into my moisturiser to just feel rejuvenated when I wake up in the afternoon. And so this one is the same, like I just, I love it. I love it, it's my favourite, I will continue to buy it. And this one here from CeraVe, this is the Eye Repair Cream. Now, as I said in my last video as well, I'm really enjoying the Avon A New Eye Cream at the moment. It's like a little dual one, very, very nice. But I kind of come and go with eye creams. But what I have to say is the CeraVe Eye Repair Cream is one that I have went back to over and over. I think this is the fourth one I've bought. So if I'm in between eye creams and I don't really know what I'm wanting to use, I will always use this. It's like a staple. It's a fail safe. I always go back to it. And then this here from Dermatica, this is actually their old packaging. I am an affiliate with Dermatica, but I have not been using the Dermatica plan since the start of March, I want to say. When my skin broke out with the perioral dermatitis, I stopped using any tretinoin because that can just aggravate that situation. So I stopped using it. But I have been on to them. I have sent them pictures of my skin now that it's all healed and stuff like that and they're going to send me a new prescription with a slightly lower dose and they have been really really good to check in with me month to month to see when I want to restart uh, and actually last month I was quite keen to restart and the pictures I sent them they were like let's just hold off another month we don't want to cause any issue so I can't recommend them enough I think they're really really good the code for them will be on the screen somewhere but it is an affiliate link I have to let you know that and I'm looking forward to restarting my Dermatica journey I probably am going to have 
have to go back to square one and be like, here's my skin before again. But they have new packaging now as well. They have rebranded, so it will look very, very different. Now, I've got one more hair item actually in here. This is the Living Proof Triple Bond Complex. I spoke about this way back in September, I want to say. This was sent to me for a review as well. No obligation to post or anything, but just to see if I liked it. Uh, I did enjoy this. I felt like I said recently, I feel like my hair is becoming quite frazzled at the bottom and I have not been using this probably for about six weeks now. It ran out a long time ago. This basket has been getting fuller and fuller. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm wondering if it's because I stopped using this. I don't know, I'm not saying for definite. Um, but what I would say is as well, that I obviously was like, my hair's not that damaged. Like, yeah, it's got damage through the bottom probably, but it's not horrific. Like on the top, it's still got a decent shine and stuff to it. But I feel like now I'm starting to wonder because I've stopped using this, is that why it's feeling a bit more frazzled? Maybe, I don't know. The only thing I would say about this as well is I can feel like there's still product in this, but the packaging is so different. Like, why does this not just... Can you not just like get this? Oh, you can. Oh, I thought this was one of these ones I'd have to break and crack open. Okay, so I would say there's at least another three or four uses out of that. So that one's coming out of the basket. We're gonna keep that one there. What I would say is as well, I got the L'Oreal one, the Pro, what was it called? Bond Repair or something or other. Um, and I tried that, but I didn't like the way that made my hair feel as soon as I used it. I don't feel that with this one. I feel like it just helps my hair feel soft and it's, it's nice, like I don't have any problems with it. I don't see any remarkable like before and after, but now that I have stopped using it for about four to six weeks, I do feel like, I literally just said in my, my most recent video that I feel like there is a little damage under here. And I thought it was because I was stopping, like I usually use a dye and stuff that keeps my hair quite shiny, but maybe, maybe it's because I've stopped using that. I don't know, we'll see. I will link it down below if you're interested. Right, so skincare, let's pull out some moisturizers because there's quite a few in here. Um, again, we're gonna talk about the Curel one. That is this here. I currently have just opened a brand spanking new one of these because I love it. But in between this one finishing and starting the new one, I did try a couple of others. So I had the Glossier one. This is a mini um, moisturizer rich or rich, whatever you want to say. Um, I really like this too. I think this is a really nice moisturizer. I have bought the full size over the years and I think it is really, really good. But again, I just feel like with Glossier not being accessible in other stores, I know you can get it in Sephora in the US now, but I'm not sure if it's on the UK Sephora site. I would have to look into that. But I feel like if Glossier was in somewhere like Boots, I would be so much more inclined to just go in and pick up a full size one of these. But because it's online and I'm not needing anything else from Glossier, et cetera, et cetera, I always wait till I need a few things from Glossier. I have said this so many times over the years. So I do really like this. I think it's a really, really beautiful moisturizer. I think in the summer, I probably wouldn't use this through the day, even with me having slightly drier skin. This is definitely more of a nighttime one, but in the winter months, I use this all day round. Love it. I then tried this from Revolution, and this is Revolution's collaboration with Sally Hughes, who's a well-known kind of beauty journalist and writer. This is the Cream Drench Rich Anytime Moisturiser. I did not like this at all. I really did not like this. There is actually still quite a lot of product left in there. I don't know if you're gonna see. Um, I did not use it up. It just felt waxy on my skin. I felt like, yes, it's a very rich moisturizer, but I kept feeling like it was just sitting on top of my skin as opposed to actually sinking into my skin. So for me, this was a big pass. It's a no thank you. I know I had seen somebody, if you are watching this video, please comment down below, saying that there was a really good dupe from Revolution for the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. I cannot see it anywhere. I've been in Superdrug, I've been in Boots. What is it? Because I've seen ones that were dupes from Revolution Skin that looked like CeraVe in the bottles, but I couldn't see one that looked like anything Glossier. So let me know what that product is because I would love to give it a try. But this one was a no thanks. So once I decided that was a no and I wasn't enjoying it, I went on to finish off my Glossier After Balm. I think I was actually still using this in the evenings to be fair. This is okay, this is nice. Um, it's definitely very, very rich and moisturizing. I like it. 
it is quite heavy so it'd be one again I would usually use when I come home from a night shift in the morning as a little bit of a mask a bedtime sleep mask but you can use it through the day as well and in the winter months I certainly used it but it probably wouldn't be one that I would rush to buy again I prefer the moisturizer Riche I just like it better so this one is a little thicker than the moisturizer Riche I get why it's like a balm as opposed to a moisturizer but for me I probably wouldn't rush to buy this one again it's nice just not for me in the long run. And before I opened my Curel one that I know I love, I used this up and this is the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. Now I got sent this because I won a competition and they sent me three of these, three of these. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get through them. So I actually passed one on, I kept the other two and this is the one I've used up. I tried it out when I first got it and was kind of like, mm, I've got so much other stuff on the go, I never gave it a good whirl. So I pulled it out again when that Sally Hughes one didn't work and I thought, right, we're gonna use this solely at night time. And I found myself using it during the day as well. I thought it was quite nice. I really enjoyed it, but it is quite pricey. It is a lovely cream. I think if you're wanting to treat yourself or you want to get a gift or you're saying like, what's on my radar, I wanna try it. If you're someone with, it says for all skin types, I would say I have got normal leading to dry. And I would say in the summer months, I probably wouldn't reach for this one as a daytime cream, but certainly as a nighttime cream. But again, through the kind of winter and spring months, I've used it both morning and night and really enjoyed it. It's anti-aging, all that kind of stuff. I just think it's a really nice moisturizer. It gives a lovely glow to the skin. It leaves your face feeling nice and kind of bouncy and plump. It is very, very nice, but it is on the pricier side. But I kind of get why. The only other thing I would say is, I can't really smell it at the moment. It does have fragrance to it, but it's not caused me any issue. I'm not someone who usually gets any issue with fragrance, but sometimes it's a reason why I don't want to reach for a product if it's too fragrant. It just make, puts me off using it. But this one, no, I think it's got to just put it on my nose there. Um, it, this one is nice. I like it. I think it actually surprised me. I was ready to tear it apart and be like, oh, it's fancy moisturizer and it's too much money for one. But actually it was quite nice. I enjoyed it. I actually seen Michaela McDade talking about the nighttime version of this one recently and she was like, mm, could give or take it. So I don't know if this one is any big difference from the nighttime one, but I thought this was okay. I then have some serums. This is the Buffy Serum from The Ordinary. It is actually not used up. I want to say, can you see it there? It's probably just below the line. I used this as a peptide serum religiously for years. I still quite like a peptide serum, but in honest truth, I feel like over the last 18 months, certainly towards the end of pregnancy and then having Jack, I really pulled back my skincare. So in the morning now, I'm very much like a hyaluronic acid serum and a moisturizer and an SPF. Um, and I will use like eye creams and things like that, but overall, I am very much like hyaluronic acid in the morning, moisturizer and an SPF. And in the evening, I am the opposite. I am a niacinamide uh, serum. Then I might use something like Dermatica, which at the moment I've not been, but a tretinoin of some sort and a moisturizer. So I've paired things right back. I still like my facial sprays and all that, but I'm not using as many serums. I rarely use any AHAs or anything like that now. I maybe will do it if my skin is feeling kind of dull and use a toner that has AHAs in it, but I don't use a lot of stuff like that anymore, like lactic acid serums and stuff. So to be honest with you, the reason this has got stuff left in it is just because I haven't been using it and I probably won't purchase it again just because I've paired back my skincare a little bit. But if you are looking for a nice peptide serum, I always thought that one was really nice value for money. So talking of hyaluronic acid serums, here are two I have used up. This one is the Isntree Hyaluronic Acid Water Essence, but this is like their serum. They have an essence as well. Uh, I've got the water over there. I'm sorry, my voice is going. And it's called the Hyaluronic Acid Toner Plus, um, which I would say is more like an essence because it's a water. Um, but this is definitely more like a serum. I love this. I am going to repurchase this again because the Hyaluronic Acid Serums that I'm using at the moment, I just don't love them as much as I love this. And this one here is the Glossier Super Bounce, which again, I think is very, very nice. But for the exact same reasons I'm saying from Glossier, it's just not as readily available. It's not on the shelves where I can just pick it up. And also I think this one, this is the 15 mil one. They do a 30 mil. I think for value for money and stuff, I'm sure this one is better. This is a 50 mil. So I, I just prefer this one. What can I say? And then this one here is Oma by Sharon C. This is their drugstore brand from Oma Beauty. Um, this was sent to me in PR. This is the Supernatural Glow Super C10 Serum. So this is what I'd spoke about in skincare. Uh, I think my daytime skincare video, I'll put it up here if it is there. But 
basically I was saying like this is a good one because it's got vitamin C, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid and vitamin E in it. It does all these four things in one bottle. So I'm going to start using this one instead of hyaluronic acid because it has all this stuff in it. The honest truth is I just didn't like it. And it's not because there's anything wrong with the product. I just felt like I wasn't getting enough hydration from this one product that I would get from my hyaluronic acids. And to be honest with you, the same thing. I use niacinamide at night anyway. And vitamin C for me is just, again, I've said it so many times when I'm talking about my skincare. Vitamin C is just something I can't slot into my routine. I don't feel I get enough benefit from it, so I just don't feel I need to use it. Some people might feel that way about hyaluronic acid and they really love vitamin C, so that's where that slots in. Some people might just use both. But personally, I just prefer hyaluronic acid and I just felt I didn't need this. Even though I think in theory, it doing four things in the one bottle is great, I just didn't reach for it as often. I think one of the most important things about products is, okay, it says it does all this stuff on the tin, but if you're not gonna daily reach for that product, then you're wasting your money, aren't you? You are better picking up the product that you know you are gonna use, and that is this one for me. So I will continue to buy that one. I then have these four little products in the bottom of the basket. This one here is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Cleansing Balm. I'm sure I took this one away on holiday with us. I can't remember what trip it was. Maybe in November, was it? November or was it to Prague? I can't quite remember. It might have been to Prague. It's nice. It's a cleansing balm. It does what it says on the tin. Very good. Enjoyed it. Thought it was lovely. Um, this one here, the La Roche-Posay Psychoplast. Um, basically, this is one that I heard Michaela McDade talking about years ago in relation to having like irritated skin, itchy skin, maybe sunburned skin, and she used it and thought it was fantastic. So when my face did break out, I was using this in the evening because it is a really, really beautiful, thick and heavy moisturizer. It might be one people feel like it's more for body, I could use it on those areas where I'm itchy on the sides as well, but I was using it on this area of my skin just to be like a comfort blanket and I thought it did a really good job. I've used up the whole tube, really, really enjoyed it. Before I picked this up, I used up this, which is the Hyaluronic Acid Moist Cream from Isn't Tree, another one that I just love. And basically I just used up the last of this. There is a little bit on the bottom, but I feel like this is probably past its best now. It doesn't actually have I use by on it. I wonder if that's because it's from Korea. Um, but I have had this for some time. They've actually changed the packaging on their products now. So I thought, mm, don't want to totally use all this up, especially when my face was irritated. And that's when I went and bought the Psychoplast. But absolutely adore both of them. Think they're very nice. Would buy this again as well. And finally, this is the Curel Moisturize Intensive Repair Eye Cream. Intensive? No, just Moisture Repair Eye Cream. And this is fabulous this is so so nice i am using up the avon one at the moment i probably will continue to use that but i have one of these in my backup to start using once i finish that one and i think it's fantastic i think it's really really nice so that is it for this video with five minutes to spare i'm just gonna have to run and put my shoes on and go pick up jack tell me if you've tried any of the products from this video i love an empties video i think it gives you a really good roundup of things that people have tried for a good length of time rather than just showing you something and being like, this is great, see you later. So I really, really enjoy these videos. They are so cathartic to make and I like looking back at things that I have repurchased as well. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye. Oh, pray for me that my first night shift goes well and that I'm feeling a little bit better in the next video. Bye.